welcome to Making Love Matter. I am Joy, Pink Girl Teaches, and I thank you for tuning in and for joining me. If you are catching a replay, thank you and welcome and continue to join us and continue to follow us. And if you find this message interesting or if you find that you're able to learn or know somebody who is going through a situation kind of similar to this or exactly like this, then share the message with them. You know, you can send it directly to their inbox or you can tag them send it to their page however you are able to get the message i am a dating and relationship coach i also am an advocate for sexual assault as well as narcissistic abuse and today i wanted to talk to you about leaving a toxic relationship that's not an easy thing to do and one of the things that you know make it so difficult to leave a toxic relationship is in that relationship, there's a cycle that takes place. It's one of that involves idealization where the victim is love bombed and then they are devalued. So you fluctuate between those two stages and what happens in doing this repetitive behavior is what it, what is called or what is known as a trauma bond is formed. And so this kind of alters the victim's way of thinking um, through cognitive dissonance where their perceived reality is affected. They may know that this is not good, yet at the same time they still long for the time when things were good with this abusive person and they continue to stay in that relationship even though everybody around them and even they themselves know that it's it's not healthy and it's not in their best interest to continue to stay in that relationship. But guess what? they still do and that's because of the trauma bond that is formed they are very very difficult to break but it's not impossible it can be done I have done it and so have countless other people done it and so if that's your reality if that's what you are facing you too can overcome and you too can come out of it and you can move on and you can excel and you can really heal you know one thing about about life and relationships is you have to afford yourself the opportunity to heal no matter what kind of relationship you're coming out of whether you actually were let's say the person who didn't commit offense in the relationship because there's always a reason why a relationship fails and it doesn't always have to be traumatic sometimes relationships just don't work because two people don't understand each other two people just don't belong together you know it doesn't always have to be a drama filled event for a relationship to end but what you do need to do in between relationships is pump the brakes take a moment pause and just reassess things. Ask yourself some questions, starting with like, what role did I play in the breakup of this relationship? That's a very important thing that you need to ask yourself, even if you feel like you didn't do anything wrong, because sometimes truly you don't, but there are things that you need to ask yourself and there are truths and realities that you need to face about about your breakup if you want to move on and have a healthy relationship. Because sometimes you see that you are attracting a certain type of person and you got to get to the bottom of why so ask yourself that question it's not it's not easy and you know even when i was asking myself that one time i was just like mm -mm, i didn't do anything wrong here i didn't deserve it it was all his fault no we can all be accountable for a level of blame you know it does not make either one of you a bad person or a bad you know bad people is just what it was and you know that's what happened and now it's time to move on but when you are coming out of a toxic relationship when you're coming out of a relationship with a narcissistic person or you know just yeah a narcissistic person it's very difficult it's very difficult because you've been conditioned to think in a particular way you've been conditioned to um, respond to situations or drama that they cause in a particular way if you know you know, if you've had that interpersonal relationship with one, then you understand that, listen, um, they thrive in, in, in drama-filled environments. And let me say this, when we come to the narcissist, male and female, both men and women have the full ability to be a narcissist. So this is not about saying, oh, all men are narcissists. No, because women are too. And, you know, just depending on the person, they can really run some havoc on you so you know it goes both ways male and female so don't think that just because you know you're a woman and you've experienced this multiple times or whatever that it doesn't happen to men there are some slick ladies out there who are doing this to the men 
And so first first things first, I would say to you is make up a, make a resolve in your mind that you are ready to be done and be at peace with it, you know? And when I say be at peace, just be okay that you know what? I'm I'm coming out, but be sure that you are ready to be out. Be sure that you want something better. And then you, for some people, you may have to implement, you know, a strategy because when you're coming out of an, a toxic relationship, when you're with an abusive person, that's when it becomes most dangerous when you're leaving, when you're trying to break free because now you're pushing them. Now you are issuing what is known as a narcissistic injury, which is really just a blow to their ego. You have to remember that with a narcissist, they are, they are very egocentric. They have this grandiose sense of self and so now who do you think you are to walk away really who do you think you are to leave you know and that's how they perceive things because you will always be an extension of the narcissist they don't see you as a separate person they see you as an extension of themselves so how dare you think how dare you think that you can walk away that's how they are thinking and you know when you when I do talk to some people who are recovering from this one thing that they say and it's you know they they are a little taken aback in my responses they will say something like oh my ex narc this and my ex narc that no it's not your ex narc you are the property of the narcissist because again they are very entitled they are very controlling and they see you like i said as an extension of who they are so it's never no it's you you are their property until you decide to issue that final discard because at the end of the day the power belongs to you the power is in the hands of the victim so how do we get to a place where you can experience this power First things first, when you are leaving, if you are able to, you go completely no contact. And no contact means just that. When you are going no contact, coming out of that toxic relationship, that means you are severing ties. And why you're doing this is so that you can close the door. This is not to gain one up on anybody and you have to stop thinking that, you know, if I if I just withdraw completely, if I stop talking to him or her completely, then I have the upper hand because they're not going to be able to get in contact in control of me. I mean, in contact of me, yes, and also they won't have control of you anymore. But you know, I'm gonna teach them a lesson. Mm -mm. First of all, that's a mistake, and you're gonna set yourself up for de uh, for defeat or for failure because you never win when it comes to these people if you play games. Stop playing games. This has got nothing to do with, excuse me, with one-upping them. But more than anything, it is allowing yourself or setting up a situation for yourself to thrive. And not only just thrive, but so now that you can um, allow yourself the opportunity to sit back, reflect, and set things in perspective so that you can move on. Because you've got to have some, you know, you've got to make a clean cut from them. So when I say no contact, this is what I mean. It means you go through your phone and you delete every last picture that they're in. Every last one. You go through your phone and you delete the text thread. All of it. If you have several different threads, delete all of them. Go through that same phone again and block their number. No contact whatsoever. Now, go to your email. If you haven't been exchanging emails with this person, guess what? Block them. Go to social media and block all all accounts block them deny them access to you and again this is so that you can start the process of healing because a lot of people will go back into their you know go back and look at them on social media to see how they're doing to see oh do they miss me let me tell you something they don't miss you okay a narcissist does not miss you a toxic person will not miss you when you leave or when you move on or if they discard you why? Because they are self-serving. It was never about you. It was always about them. The only thing about you that they will miss is what you used to do for them, period. That's it. Not you, the person. Because they didn't care about you, the person, in the first place. They chose you so that they could manipulate you. They chose you so that they could benefit from you. They chose you so that they could get adoration, admiration, attention, affection, money, sex, your time, whatever. They chose you for whatever was a source of supply for them. And so they benefit. So that's all they're going to miss. They were never invested in you and go no contact, okay? Now, 
does it how does this work okay once you've blocked them and they've reached out or they now know that you have blocked them is going to do another thing is going to issue a narcissistic injury again another blow to their ego which is going to cause narcissistic rage they're going to implode and this is where you have to be strong and this is where you need to surround yourself with a solid circle you need to surround yourself with people who reassure you who reaffirm you who let you know who you are so that you can continue to stand in that truth because this is where the real work starts you thought going no contact <laughs> was hard. But once you once you have issued that injury and once they are raging, they start a smear campaign. Now what the smear campaign is is just to discredit you. It's simply to discredit you. It's simply to make them look like the victim and to make you look bad. So they will go to any and all means to talk badly about you they may even post like if they have photos of you like I know there's one story where he actually posted her naked pictures on the internet simply because she's got no contact I mean people will do different things because the ultimate goal for them is so that you reach out to them so that once you reach out to them they can have the final say and then block you that's all this is it's about power and control period this has nothing to do with um you know feelings of kindness affection no just don't even think about any of that it's got nothing to do with that it's to get one up on you so that you can feel the way that you um so that you can feel how you made them feel and that's all it is and with with a toxic person one thing you got to remember is that they are always projecting they are always projecting their feelings of of self-loathing of of, of you know just disgust with themselves onto you because they are very they are they're pathologically envious they're, they have pathological jealousy and so you know how 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 could you really be you know think about it how can a person truly accept themselves when that's the core of who they feel who they are they are shame-based individuals and so you know that's what's gonna happen that's 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 just part of how it works out and it's it's textbook it happens across the board with with whatever you're dealing with you know whether they're just a an abusive person but let me say this and this is why I just went right to the narcissist because we have people who are physically abusive that's a narcissist they have a they have a lot of narcissistic traits so just be very careful you know when when you are going away go no contact and you know stay no contact now how did i do it i i messed up i messed up yeah i have to admit that i messed up and i broke no contact twice yes but once i realized like you know the first time that i did mess up um I didn't close the door the first time all the way for a little while, you know, because I was still like, I still couldn't believe that, you know, this is really real and from the beginning this person has been lying or that, you know, it's just <laughs> there's nothing there because to you it's real, you know, you go in with your real emotions and everything and so to you it's very real and so I had to be like, okay, so this is just about nothing so let me just, um, let me just block them again. In fact, no, I didn't block him. I didn't block him, but you know, he he got what he wanted. He was able to talk to me and then discard or you know just go no contact on me until until whatever was going on with whatever source of supply he had that he needed now to re uh, validate himself. So he reached back out to me, and I don't know what I was thinking, but we spoke for a little bit, and I just was like, you know, this is wasting my own time, and I just decided to go hard. For hardcore full out sorry <laughs> full out no contact and that's just what I did and so here we are now and I've been doing it and it, it becomes easier you know and in time you you do you do find your footing and you do well you do better you find yourself and one you know one thing that you've got to know is that part of this no contact you've got to be focusing on self-love you know and, and let self-love 
not just be manicures, pedicures, getting your no self love. Let's dig down deep inside of you. And let's do the things that make you comfortable. Let's set up healthy boundaries so that when you start meeting people again, you know what to accept and what to not accept, or you know, so that you are protecting yourself because that's what it's about at the end of the day. You're protecting yourself because you recognize that you are a privilege and you do you get to that point by practicing self love. You know, so it's just that's how the circle works. But if you are a person who can go full out no contact because you may have children, you may have business, they may actually be your employer or, um, you know, whatever. There are various situations, a family member, a friend. When you can't go no contact, there are valid reasons. But be sure, you know, that it's actually a valid reason to go no, um, to not go no contact. You do what we call gray rock. And to call gray rock, if you think about a gray rock, it's pretty dull. There's nothing inspirational about that rock. Yes, there is, because now I want you to become that dull, boring rock. Narcissists can't do, they don't do well with boredom. And it's because they get, you know, because they get bored that they discard people, that they, because they're bored, they go and find new sources of supply or, you know, they just find new ways to entertain themselves through, you know, the havoc that they wreck in other people's lives. So, great rock. That simply means that you only talk about what you have to talk about. So, if you were working on a business project or a business assignment, stick to that only. There is no time to be, sh it's not the time to share any details about your personal life. Neither is it the time for you to, you know, share about yourself, about what you're, what's going on. Small chatter, no. Let's stick to the details, what matter. What do the kids need? How are the kids? What is going on with the kids? What do I need to know about the kids? Keep it to just what matters. So it's not a sharing about your dating life. It's not sharing about, let me tell you about my day yesterday. Oh, guess what accomplishments I have. No, it's dull. Straight to the point and just be as business as possible you know just the facts and don't embellish anything don't highlight anything be monotone be boring they hate that they hate that and they'll leave you alone so you know that's all that gray rocking is and it's very effective you know they may you know call you boring or whatever they may try to you know get in your feelings get under your skin and that's fine that's what they're gonna do you have to anticipate stuff like that but you know fight that battle in your mind you know answer them in your mind don't verbalize anything this is where self-control is so important because you want to be able to maintain a sense of freedom from them that you are not engaging in that you know because that can be bait because what they will do is throw something out there so that you can come back and now they engage you in that and then they are able to go a step harder than you they're able to hit harder than you they don't care because they have nothing to lose at the end of the day it's you so you you set the tone for this you have the full control and let me tell you something if you are discarded by a toxic person by a narcissist let me tell you what the final discard is yours because a discard from them is just an illusion it's just putting you on a shelf and um, when they get tired or bored with their news or with whatever whoever they're dealing with they want to pull you back off that shelf they want to X recycle you you know and <laughs> Like I said, you are an entire privilege. Men, you are a privilege. Women, you are a privilege. Don't, do not, do not allow anybody to shelf you. Do not allow anybody to recycle you. Nah, nah, not you, no. Let them play that game with somebody else, but let it not be you. Move on and just keep it like that. Keep it like that. Anticipate them trying to come back into your life. It's not about you. It's about what you do for them. It's about that ego gratification. It has nothing to do with you. So, you know, it's very possible to come out on top. It's very possible. And when I say on top, it's not. I'm not saying that, you know, that you're able to, to defeat them or one-up them. On top is living your best life authentically, healing moving forward in your purpose and pursuing your passion and slaying your goals that's what i mean when i say come out on top is we're gonna leave that we're gonna leave them right there where they are and make sure your hands and your heart are clean what goes around definitely does come around so don't go out putting things out there that you don't want 
popping back up in your life. And the crazy thing is you don't have any control of how it's going to come back to you. So be very careful about that. Focus on you. That's it. Mind your business, drink your water. That's how I like to live my life. And I invite you to live your life like that too. So focus on you and just keep it moving. And that's it for today. So thank you so much for joining me on Making Love Matter. My name is Joy or Pink Girl Teaches. And I hope I meet you or I see you again next week. And like I said earlier, if you do find this video interesting, if it does speak to you, like it, comment, share with, uh, with a friend who you know that who you know could benefit from this. I'm getting tongue-tied. Who you know could benefit from this. But for today, I thank you so much for joining me. And God bless you. And have a fantastic Tuesday.